Today's video, it's all about making a crankshaft from a disc brake rotor. So, how am I going to do that? Well, here is a pattern I've made out of wood and a little bit of aluminium for the fillets. And this will be used for a sand mould and we'll cast it out of the disc brake rotor because lately i found you can get very high tensile cast iron using disc brake rotors and it should make that crankshaft a lot stronger. So how easy is it to make a crankshaft from cast iron? Well so far I've had two goes and they've all been failures. So this is the first one. Not enough metal and I'll show you a short film clip and you'll see what happened there. I underestimated exactly how much metal I needed and that was the last mould and I ran out. This is the second effort I'm not sure whether you can see it or not but there is lots of shrinkage so what I'll do I'll give a close-up shot so you can see the shrinkage and that's the second effort and that's a reject as well but I will be machining that and doing some extensive testing on it here is a close-up of the shrinkage depressions in the web of the crankshaft as you can see they're pretty deep and that's where it joins into the big end and there's more over here but it's a bit hard to see with the light I've got at the moment. Now why did the second attempt fail? Well you look at the rises here and here they're rather small so there's not enough feed metal in there to compensate for that shrinkage. So for the next attempt which you'll see all the moulding done is I will have a riser the same shape as that but it'll sit up a lot higher and it'll directly feed inside there and hopefully that attempt will get the successful casting that I'm looking for. This is a one piece pattern so what I've done I've put sand in there soft rammed and how I started off I just put it in like so just squeeze it down Then I have to check these sides to make sure that they are perpendicular otherwise if they're not they will break off. The next thing I do just sieve some facing sand on Then all I have to do is just flip it over and lift off my box and then we recycle all the sand. So what I do, just use the wire, just keep going down until I reach the parting line. Then you have to go all the way around finish it off. So I've dusted the mould, all I have to do is pack in the sand. But what I'd like to show you is the last time I had a go at casting this crankshaft I had a lot of shrinkage just in there. So what this will do is there's plenty of feed metal so make sure there's no shrinkage I hope and it'll work this time. Now when I start to disassemble this mould, I've got a cordless drill here and that's how I disassemble it. These are screws that hold everything together. All I have to do now is carefully lift it off. Now I just have to lift the pattern out 
without breaking too much of the mould. Now I'll very carefully lift on to the cope. Now it's ready to receive some molten cast iron. Here is something that works really well. You'll see there's the sprue and I spilt a little bit just here. These little dams, they're transformer laminations. You just push them into the sand 
and it stops that metal from flowing down into your riser. Works quite well. Here are the crankshafts. Now they've been knocked out of the sand moles. And look at that. Amazing what the risers do. They stop the shrinkage on top of the crankshaft webs, so that's really great. But the only thing I dislike about these risers is you've got to cut them from one end to the other. And there's four of them I've got to do. So, it turned out really well, the third attempt. As you can see, that centralising collar, it just makes sure that the centre drill goes pretty well centre of the crankshaft. The crankshaft has been set up between centres. So the first important thing is to put a piece of packing steel in between the webs so when I tighten up the tailstock, it doesn't bend the crankshaft and to hold that into place I use a cable tie. And then over here on the chuck, We've got a driving dog and it's tied in with a cable tie as well so it doesn't bounce around and rattle like sometimes they do. As you can see the crankshaft's got a bit of distortion. It's a bit of a problem that could be from the shrinkage. So we'll see how we go when we machine it up. So I've machined the whole length just there. And as you'll see it's a bit of shrinkage in there and in there and then it tapers off. So far it's been machining quite well, it's good cast iron. So I'll just keep going, it takes an incredibly long time to machine a crankshaft and I have to be patient and I have to confess I'm not very patient. So here we are, I've machined up this journal this side here, I've machined the thrust part in here and then I've machined this as well and give it a polish with emery cloth. I'm very curious to see how well cast iron gets a polish on it and if you use the right kind of grit you can get it very fine. So if you're interested in finding out how long it took, well it's about 55 minutes to get that machined all up and polished up so it does take quite a while. This is the last operation with the crankshaft. I've got a machine, the big end pin just here. And what was the problem? I thought I could do it in my four jaw chuck. But the trouble is the bore through the chuck wasn't big enough so I couldn't offset that. And that uh, part of the crankshaft there just wouldn't go further enough away. So I had to drill two centre holes here and here and hold it in that way. And you have a look here. There it is. There's my cable ties again. Great things. So we hold a piece of wood here and behind here I've got a piece of rubber so it doesn't chatter because when I machine this crank web it's got a lot of intermittent cutting and it tends to vibrate. Now we've got the crank pin done. It's all polished up. Looks really good. What's satisfied with that? We're now at the stage where we can do a destructive test on the crankshaft. So what I'll be doing, I'll put the Stilsons in here and then twist it around and see if it'll break inside the crank pin. There are two pipes here. One end goes over the handle on the Stilsons. We go across to here. So from there to the other end is 2.1 metres. Well 
that did the job. It broke. Here is the aftermath of what happened when I twisted that crank pin with the Stilsons. It let go. But what was very interesting, I recommend highly to go back to that clip, the previous clip, and have a look very closely and see how far that crank pin twists before it breaks. It was very surprising to me. I would have thought it would have broken straight away. But this test is for tension. Cast iron has the weakest point in tension, not under compression. This is the second destructive test. So what I'm aiming for, I'm going to put two wedges in there and hit them with a hammer and spread these webs apart so the crank pin will break again. Another good result, it broke. This is the aftermath from when I put the wedges in between the crank webs and just keep hitting it with the hammer. So that was surprising as well. If you look back at the footage, you'll see the crankshaft starting to bend quite a lot before it broke. So this one here is another tension test. It's not under compression. And these are the weak points with cast iron. So these are the crankshafts where I cast. And what I've done, I've cut off all the risers. So you can see just in there, there's no shrinkage. And same with there, there's no shrinkage. But also there's no shrinkage where it was gated in there and there and there and there. So I'm really happy with that. But what was interesting with this one was there was virtually no shrinkage in the top of the riser. So what I'm thinking is the disc brakes were different from the previous disc brakes I'd used. So this one didn't shrink anywhere nearly as much, so maybe I didn't need these risers. But anyway, that's one of the things you do, or what happens when you use scrap. So, the other problem with this, as you've seen in the previous video where I was machining where the big shrinkage defects, these shafts here were not running true. And the problem with that is, when you machine them, you have to take so much off to get them running true again and what happens is you get a smaller diameter than you, what you intended and also I stuffed up here this diameter is smaller than this one here so the same thing happened again so what I'm going to have to do with the pattern here is I'm going to have to build up all these parts here and here to make them to acceptable diameter and allow for distortion and when you machine a fair bit off you'll still get to the correct size what you are after. So these castings here, I won't be machining them, they are scrap because like I said all these problems with um, the shafts not running true. I thought this would be interesting for you how I made the tool to machine the crank pin on the crankshaft. Normally I use the parting tool but it wasn't long enough but this one is specially designed for it. So what it is, this is all a strip of mild steel and I welded a high speed steel tool bit to it. We'll turn it over and that part there actually goes into the tool post where you've got the screws clamping down on it. So the idea is when you have something such a large thickness like that, it tends to dampen a lot of the vibrations and makes the tool far more rigid. And there we can see I've got the radius either end so what I do I just move it backwards and forwards and I can cut the pin with the minimum amount of vibration.